it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks. And today we are making a bolero. So this one is called the Pixie Bolero and I really enjoyed making it. It is a fairly easy design, but you can wear this bolero in two different ways. And it is meant as a summer throw over over a summery dress to just keep you warm in case it's not that hot just yet. It is kept together with a couple of buttons and I made this bolero for Rachel because she wanted a crochet piece made by me to take with her on holiday. I do hope you will enjoy making it. Let's get started. So what will you need for this project? Of course, the usual suspects, scissors, a darning needle. Then here I have some crocodile clips just to put the bolero together without having to crochet it together so you can try it on or so you can see what it looks like. Then I have here my crochet hook, which is a four millimeter hook. The yarn is a DK yarn and it is prescribed for a four millimeter hook. Now, you know that for my tension, or you might not know, I usually go down half a hook size. So I would normally use a three and a half for this type of yarn. But because I want a looser and more relaxed fabric, I am going to use my four. I'm going to make use of my tension and that will give me a fabric that's lovely and loose like this. Not too loose, but just that little bit more lacy than what I would normally create. So go up half a hook size from what you usually use for DK. And the yarn I am using is a Wendy Supreme Cotton Love double knit DK. And it is a mixture of acrylic and cotton. It's a lovely yarn to use for a summer wearable. And this one is the colour blush and I thought it was a lovely pink colour and yeah, I'm loving the way my bolero is turning out. So I'm using two balls of these. So you need to make two panels. I will show you in a moment how to make the stitches for the panels and you will use one ball of this for each panel. So two panels, two balls of yarn. So you will also need some buttons. So you will need six buttons in all. And these are some buttons that Rachel chose uh, when she was younger and I made a dress for her. And of course she grew out of the dress, but I kept the buttons. So she's going to love seeing the buttons on her little bolero, I'm sure. And I have here a needle, a darning needle, but um, the reason why I'm going to be using this one is because of course it has to go through your buttonholes with a piece of yarn as well so make sure your needle is suitable for your button but also you must make sure that your button is suitable for your work here so this button is only just big enough so it could be you know it would be better if it was a little bit bigger but I am using these anyway because of course they are already Rachel's buttons and I know she loves them so these buttons will be used to go through the boxes, so make sure your button fits through the box and doesn't come undone. These, however, do, but never mind. Uh, Rachel loved the fact that I used these buttons for her bolero. <music> So let me show you how to make the fabric for our poncho. Now, first of all, we need a multiple of eight plus one, and we need to have four boxes. So a multiple of four boxes for the shell. So it's important to keep that in mind. So let's get started for our panel. So you need to make two panels. So start with a slip knot, insert your hook, and for the big panel, you are going to chain 137 chains. So that's 136, which is a multiple of eight plus one. Now I'm going to get started for you now with a sampler because 
once I got this down, I just went for it. Um, and so I didn't film the start. So I'm going to do the start in a sampler, which will allow you to see really well what's happening. And then it will be easier for you to see for your bigger panel as well. So for my sampler, I'm going to chain 25. So let's do that. That's 24 plus 1. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 22, 23, 24 and 25. So I now have a chain of 25. You should have a chain of 137. Now we're going to do a chain one and turn for every row from now on and that chain one is not counted so that's your turning chain you do not count it okay so row two chain one so keep an eye on that 25th chain so chain one you turn it will be easier and more obvious in the next rows then we do a double crochet in the first chain. So you yarn over and that means you do a double crochet into that 25th chain. So after your turning chain. And Leila wants to take part as well, I think. Leila, what is it? And then we are going to chain one. We are going to skip one. And you do a double crochet in the next chain. And that is our first box made. Chain one, skip a chain into the next one. You are going to place a double crochet. So I pick up one loop here. There will be two loops behind my hook. Pull up the yarn yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. So I'm going to continue like this and I will be making 12 boxes. You will be making 68 boxes. So I'm just doing my last chain, then I have two chains left over. Of course, here I skip this one and this is the one for my last double crochet in there. Always needs a little bit of persuasion. Have to do it again. There we go. Okay. So like I said, this is 12 boxes. You will have 68. <laughs> for row three and from here on we are going to keep on repeating the rows so the fabric we are making is made up of rows three four five six seven eight three four five six seven eight three four five six seven eight okay so this is row one this is row two now on to row three the first row of our repeat chain one turn double crochet in the first stitch because we disregard the chain one that we use as our turning chain and then we are going to be placing a double crochet in each stitch so of course because we've done chains and because it's the same color you can just go around the chain and the next one you do into the double crochet around the chain and into the double crochet now, if you were to place both of them into the double crochet, it would make it too clustery. So that's why I like doing it like this. So it looks like a full straight row of double crochets. So let me just show you. So this is what it looks like. So row three is a row of double crochets. I will see you at the end. So I've just done my row of double crochets and all I need to do is the last one. Now the last one always sort of disappears a little bit for me. So if you look at this 
construction here. To find the last V, you sort of have to tilt it towards you, go and look for it towards the front. So there it is. And for me, it's always this bigger V here. So this one here is that turning chain that we disregard. This one is the top of that first double crochet. And so that's the one that you need to sort of go and fetch almost at the front of your work and do your double crochet in there. Now make sure you do do that and make sure you remember to go and find it there and then you will not be losing any stitches. So that was row three. You have now done 137 double crochets and I have done 25 of them. Now we are going to do row four and we start again the same way. Chain one, turn, and a double crochet in the first stitch. So that means in that very first V where that chain one is coming out of, that's where we are going to go in to do our very first stitch. And as you can see, look, this is that little V that was a little bit bigger that I was showing you earlier. And of course, when we come back here, I will have to go and find it at the front there. So this row, row four, is once again a boxes row. So chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. And you will be making 68 boxes and I will be making 12 of them. I will see you at the end of the row. So I'm nearly at the end of the row, chain one, and look here, this is the one I'm skipping, and this little one here, or bigger one in this case, because that's the one that we need to go and find towards the front, that's the one that I am going to be using for my double crochet. Now once you know that that happens, you know where to go and find it, you will go and find it every row. So you'll soon get used to that. So now for row four, you've got 68 boxes and I have 12 boxes. So row five, chain one, let's turn. We are going to place one double crochet in the same stitch. So in that very first V, we place our double crochet. There we go. And then we are going to do a chain three to get started. One, two, and three. Then we skip a chain, so this one here, and on top of the first double crochet, we are going to place a single crochet. So in this row, we are going to make loops to adhere the shells to, but we start with half a loop. So this is half a loop done. Now we are going to chain five because our chains will be made up of five chains. So one, two, three, four, and five. Then you skip one, two, three stitches, and into the fourth one, you are going to do a single crochet. So really, you're always working on top of a double crochet here. So when you do a single crochet, you will be putting it on top of a double crochet, and here we're skipping one, okay? So chain five, one, two, three, four, and five, skip, 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 so skip this double crochet and work into the next one. One, two, three, four, five, skip three stitches into the next stitch. One, two, three, four, five, and it's really easy, you just skip a double crochet and you work in the next double crochet. One, two, three, four, five, yeah, into there. And so indeed, you should have one left over here, which we did here as well. So we're going to do one, two, three, and then a double crochet, picking up those two strands there. Voila. You have now got 33 loops, so here, 33 loops and two half loops. 
So the half loops are to get started and to finish, and then in between you have 33 loops. I, on the other hand, have five loops. Now for row six, we're going to chain one and turn. And we are going to do a single crochet in the same stitch. So on top of that double crochet, you just go in there, and you do a single crochet like so. Then we are going to place three double crochets, one chain and three double crochets around the next chain space. So not this one, but the next one. So three double crochets. one chain and three double crochets. There we go, look. And then around the next chain space, you're going to place a single crochet. Voila, and that is our shell. So next chain space, you're going to place three double crochets, one chain, and three double crochets. Two and three. Then you go to the next chain space and you place a single crochet. So you anchor your shells in the other chain spaces there. Then on to the next chain space to do another shell of three double crochets, one chain and three double crochets. And then in the next chain space, because that's where we're at, you're going to place your single crochet. But because of course this is the last one, you choose that last stitch, that larger V, to do your single crochet because of course this is how we started as well. So now I have three shells but of course you are going to have 17 shells made like this. So now for row seven we're going to make boxes again but the boxes are slightly different shape from the usual boxes. We need to straighten up our row again to be able to start with these. So let's do that. So row seven, chain one, turn. One double crochet in the same stitch. So in this case, on top of that single crochet. There we go. Then we are going to chain four. Now throughout your work here, you're going to be chaining three. But for that first one, I just thought three was not enough. So to start with, we are going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. Then you go to your first chain one space and you are going to do a single crochet. So you go in and you place a single crochet around the chain space of the first shell there. Then you are going to chain three. So throughout the project now you're going to be chaining three and then at the end you will again chain four. So let's chain three, one, two and three. But now of course this brings you to a lower part of your row below and while we did a single crochet here at the highest part we are now going to place a double crochet on top of the single crochet so double crochet on top of that single crochet and as you can see this will make your top straight again so then chain three one two three on top of the highest point here into that chain space, a single crochet, one, two, three, on top of that lowest place here, onto that single crochet, we place a double crochet. And these are the boxes that we are now making. So of course, you're going to continue like this all along your row. 
and of course I've already made it to the end of my row and as you can see here I am now ready to do my last little box so one two three four chains for this one and of course I'm going to end with a double crochet on top of that last stitch which was that single crochet from the row below so as you can see now look my line here has straightened up so I have made six of these boxes you will have made 34 boxes now that our work is straight again we can start row eight so let's get started chain one turn and we do a double crochet in the same stitch there we go and now we are going to be doing boxes again but we need to place them sensibly so we get our original count of 68 boxes back so we are going to chain one and we place a double crochet in the middle of this loop here of this chain space chain one double crochet on top of the single crochet chain one a double crochet around the chain space chain one a double crochet on top of the double crochet and this way I thought it was easy to get back to your original count of your boxes and it's not that hard to just place a double crochet in the middle of that chain space there if they sort of go together a little bit like here for example it's easy just to move it along a bit to make sure that your boxes are nice and square so this way it will be a quite a quick row because you are placing your double crochets around the chain space and then chain one and then a double crochet into the stitch chain one double crochet around chain one and yeah i'm already at the end and look i'm looking for my v there which always lies to the front there we go so this is my row now and like you can see some are a little bit out of sync so just make sure you have a quick look to see that they are all in the right position so i am now back to my 12 boxes and you should have your 68 boxes again now this is the end of my repeat so from now on we will start again with row three double crochets row four boxes row five loops row six shells row seven the bigger boxes and row eight the smaller boxes again so now you're going to have to repeat this until you have 32 rows then you will have to do row 33 repeat row 3 and then you will have to do row 34 repeat row 4 so you end the same way as you started so this is what it's looking like now and i have to say i do love the design it's nice it's delicate it's got holes but it's also got um, you know sort of solid parts and i really really love it so i am using the supreme cotton love dk and i am using a four millimeter hook just to give it a little bit more of a laciness and a loose feel but i am really really loving this here we are look at that i have finished my panel so this is what it's looking like right now and my panel is 80 centimeters by 33 centimeters or 31 inches by 13 inches and of course you're going to need a second panel so i have already made this right here so to get started we are going to hold the panels with the wrong sides on the outside make sure you have your slip knot around your hook 
So we're going to get started in the first box here. And of course, we've got this sort of, you know, construction here. So try to pick up something that's really in the corner. So I'm picking up those two V's there right on the outside. And then you start putting two single crochets in each box. And you do this for 20 boxes. So in total, you will be doing 41 single crochets. Now don't do this too tightly. Make sure you do this nice and loose. So I have now placed my single crochets from the outside in my 20 boxes to the inside near the neck opening. So I have done this on both sides now. So as you can see, these are the ends that are just hanging there, waiting for the recipient to try it on to see if it's the correct opening for her. So when we now open up this poncho like this, this is what the seam will look like. And now it's still a little bit bunched up, but we need it to go like this. So once you've worn it a couple of times, it will be better, of course, but you could also do this little pulling carefully Okay, so once you have attached the shoulders, you're going to lay down your poncho with the seam up. So that means you've got the wrong side facing up and you are going to attach the buttons in these locations here. So the bottom boxes row on both sides and right in the corner here on the right hand side and then when you turn your work around it will be the same location on the other panel as well so make sure you attach your buttons like this so one on the first double crochet then i kept six boxes free one on that next double crochet six boxes free and one on that next double crochet this will allow us to either close the poncho over there with these buttons or do it up over here. So this will make sure that we can wear this poncho either this way with the neck opening as a bowed neck or wear it this way with the neck opening as a v-neck. And do them up here and here. So I hope you like this idea and I hope you will try to make it. I hope you will enjoy making this poncho. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.